Hello and welcome to Minecraft, where today we're going to be building a small mini game where we're basically going to have waves of zombies attacking a player. And I'm going to basically take you through the map making process and show you a lot of techniques which will hopefully allow you to create your own maps. So this is going to be sort of a tutorial video and a sort of introduction to creating mini games, maps and such. So as you're following this tutorial, hopefully you'll just pick up on some techniques and you know go out there and I encourage you throughout this video to explore the techniques that I show you not just copy everything that I do because there's so much you can do and basically we're here on the main main screen of Minecraft because when you're creating maps you want to create new worlds specific to your maps and mini games so we're just gonna call this test mini game oh god okay let's put that there Test mini game. Now, let's go to creative, world options, super flat world. Now, we're going to want to customize these quite a little bit. We want to remove all of the layers apart from one, then go to presets and change this 7 over here, or whatever number you have here, to 0, and then click use preset. As you can see, that changes the material to air. So hit done, um, hit done again, and let's create the new world. Alright, loading world. And the reason we're doing this is because we want our file sizes to be quite small. And having nothing that needs to be generated and a completely empty world really works for it. And also you want your mini game to be the focus of the world. So doing this is sort of how you want to do it. So jump into your world. And you're actually going to want to give a little bit of a fly around at first. I mean, you have no idea where you are, but just give it a little bit of a fly around. And the reason we're doing this is to create loaded chunks. Because we're going to be using MC Edit to import our arena into this world. Now, if you don't have MC Edit, there'll be a link to download it in the description. So I highly advise you go check that out. It's an amazing map making tool. And there are many tutorials of how to download it but it's fairly simple so I'll leave you to that so we're just sort of generating new chunks um, flying around a little bit you can't really tell but I am moving I'm just sort of circling around and I think that should be good so let's save and quit and we're gonna exit out to my desktop and open up MSC edit so get take a little while now I created the arena in a previous world in my sort of testing world and I advise that you do similar sort of things like we'll get into my world and we'll have a look around it just to give a little bit of a demonstration but when you're building maps or mini games or whatnot I suggest you create various parts of it in different worlds and in sort of segments and then bring it all together because if you try and create one massive sort of thing all at once it often turns out to be quite cluttered and quite messy so build components do tests and um, various things like that to sort of make sure that you know what you're doing when you're getting into the map because when I first started map making it was a lot of trial and error and I had several oh god I seem to have opened it twice um, but anyway there, there's a lot of trial and error and you'll find that as you go along so let's just actually close one of these windows um, nope I do not wish to archive it MC is being a little unresponsive so this is the world winch I made this arena here, you can see it's just a small arena, um, there's no redstone really to it at the moment, um, apart from that, but I don't think that's actually part of the um, thing, that's just something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste that into our new world so that we have something to work from. So once the chunk loads up, um, we can see it starting to come into focus. And as you can see over here, there's actually another sort of arena thing. But this is for my adventure map. So as you can see, I've been planning things in this world and sort of importing them to my um, main map worlds. And there's another large thing over here, which for some reason doesn't really want to load up. But anyway, we're going to select. We use the shadow to select the size of this thing. And we're just going to drag it up like so. Make sure you've got it all. Bring this up as well. Um, cut out that bit there which isn't part of the map 
and yeah that should be good gotten everything um, and then hit control C oh god control C copying blocks hit save and you want to sort of backtrack to your MC edit schematics folder in the raw dollar sign XA sort of part um, and we're going to call this test arena so obviously this is just an example it's not I'm not making a proper full mini game out of this so we're just sort of you can make it as fancy as you want but here we're just going to be having a look at some of the techniques so let's now find the world we made the test mini game world in which we want our actual game to be so as you can see flying around the world sort of loaded up these chunks um, the loaded chunks of the checkerboard area if you weren't aware so let's see select that go to import and backtrack to our schematics folder again and find the schematic so what did we call this we called it test arena I believe um, so here we go here it is now let's just import that in like so and drag it up to here great now while we're in MC edit um, I think there's one more thing that we should do um, we're gonna take oh god okay we didn't actually import that <laughs> probably want to do that so let's go back to Testarina, plonk it down here, nudge it up, just hitting shift and the WSD keys to nudge it around and import that there, should be fine. Um, okay, so what I was saying is what we might want to do is simply select a single location, so let's deselect that, a single location like that, nudge it up a bunch and we're going to create a platform so we're going to take take it over here maybe and just oh god where's it gone okay there it is no, that looks fine so actually let's nudge over there there we go okay so this looks like a good area what we're going to create is the spawn for multiplayer people um, because that's useful you want to create that so let's go to fill and replace, choose a arbitrary material, stone will do just fine. So it replaces it with stone, now we can deselect it. Come over to move spawn point and place it just above it. It will say that, just click OK, fix it for me. And there we go, we have the spawn point checked there. So that's good. Where's our player? Let's just move the player as well. Uh, we'll move the player up to, I don't know. Come here. Actually, no, let's, I can't be bothered to do that. So, good, we've done everything in MCL for now. Let's exit out, um, save it, and open up Minecraft again. Make sure that's saved. Alright, okay. Now, let's open up Minecraft and open up the test minigame. You don't have to close MC edit, just make sure you don't edit it at the same time. So as long as you don't try and save things while um, you've got while you've got something open, it should be fine. Because then it's off you, you're you're opening it in two different places. So great, here we have our spawn location. Let's just check this is working and kill ourselves. Now I think it works just sort of dropped us. Because what's happening is from that point there it's spawning us in within a 20 within a circle of a 20 radius so at this point so what we're going to do is we're going to press F3 to bring up our sort of debugger or help region go into your chat and type the coordinates you see so I see 43 64 minus 45 now just type those in come over to here drag this off and we're going to create a clock just over here so that and so let's build a little clock I'm sure most of you know how to build a clock so hopefully this should be nothing new take a torch two repeaters 
Torch. Oh, God. Torch. Repeater. Repeater. We just need some redstone. Like so. Awesome. So, we can close the debugger screen. And now we need a command block. So, give at p137. Awesome. Now, what we want to do is we want to say tp at a and then we want to set some parameters so what we're, what we're going to do is we're okay, done we go into our chat and click the up arrow key twice that'll give us the coordinates we wrote down so then we want to do is we're going to, we want to do we want to type 43 comma 64 comma minus 45 comma 20 so 43 is the x coordinate 64 is the y coordinate and minus 45 is the z coordinate and then 20 is the radius so the range um, you could write this in x equals y equals and z equals and r equals if that's easier but just like that it should be fine because that's the general order i believe now what we want to do with people in that region is we want to teleport them into this container here oh god okay so we've got quite a lot of mobs let's show you some of the game rules just to get rid of those mobs so let's do slash game rules I'll introduce you to the concept of game rules or game rule now what game rules are are they are rules in which the game abides in order to govern the way in which the world works now a general world will have I think most of these set to true so let me give you a little example for example we see command block output do fire tick do mob loot do mob spawning do tile drops keep inventory and mob griefing now for a adventure map we, we usually want command block output to be set to false do fire tick to set to false mob loot depends on what you're doing mob spawning set to false tile drops doesn't matter keep inventory that is dependent and mob griefing is usually off so I'm going to set some general ones at the moment. We're going to do game rule slash game rule. We're going to do 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 mob spawning. And we're going to set that to false. Yeah, it says game rules being updated. We're also going to want to do I think mob griefing and set that to false. And I think we're probably also going to want to do keep inventory and set that to true and keep inventory means that when you die you keep the inventory that you have so let's go down here and see the effects of our game rules so far now we've got a bunch of creepers we selected do mob griefing we switched it off so let's get one of these creepers angry at us get it to blow up as you can see it didn't affect the terrain around it at all so that's what do mob griefing did now that guy's pretty pimped out that's interesting but anyway Let's get rid of all these mobs by saying it to peaceful. And then let's go back to hard or whatever. Something that can spawn mobs. And we're not going to get any mobs spawning in here anymore. So I, you're going to have to take your, my word for it right this second. But during this sort of video, you'll notice that there are no more mobs down there. Because we switched the do mob spawning off. Now take note that this won't include spawners or dispensers, so you can still manually put mobs into the arena, which is good. It allows for a nice sort of range of control. They just won't spawn naturally. So that's game rules in pretty much a nutshell. Let's move back onto what we were doing and set up the initial spawning of the player or the bringing it in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the coordinates of this region here and write them down again. So zero, we have 68 on the Y and minus 26 on the Z. If you're confused about what coordinates to use, always go for the one in brackets because that's the one, the more accurate one. Otherwise you get people spawning in wall, walls. So we're just gonna say that out loud so we have record of it. Come back over here to our command block and click zero and then go to 68 minus 26 awesome um, all right sorry about that my recording just randomly decided to start responding so I don't know when it cut out but um, let's get back to what I was saying 
basically this command block is searching for people within the region of that block there and it's going to teleport them into there so if we just fly over near this block as you can see it teleported us over to this this coordinate here so awesome we know that's working anyone within a 20 radius of that block over there we get teleported into there and the reason we want that to happen is simply because when someone spawns in they'll be spawned to that region there so I actually think that we should probably make this a little bit of a faster clock so I think a nice fast clock which might work is if we grab the comparator and switch that to the subtractor mode and then put a torch there that's a lot quicker but it may be just too quick I think it's too quick to execute a command because if we look at how quick this clock is it's ridiculous it's a half tick half tick sort of thing so it won't even register as a clock if you have repeaters it just registers as a completely true it registers it as being on all the time that's how quick that clock is I think that clock's probably a little too quick I think we're just gonna have to go with our standard non-toggleable one which is a shame well it is toggleable but you have to do some fancy stuff to get that going so we're just gonna we could do this get it going we could just have a torch under here constantly paying that block now if we put a torch there it will stay on for one tick and start the clock so I've got a clock going if we stand over here it instantly teleports us and that's a lot quicker I think that works a little better so cool nice that's working um, yeah what we also want to do is probably set the spawn point to that so let's just copy and paste this entire thing just shift and then click the backspace to select it control C control V and we're going to do spawn point command and we want the same coordinates but we want yeah that should work I think so anyone within the region there will get teleported over there and set and have their spawn point set to in here as well awesome great so I think that's about it for this video sorry about the random cut halfway through it we'll continue the video we'll continue this um, building of the mini map in the next video and yeah that's about it for this video I said and I'll see you guys next time thanks for watching